Hi, I'm Connor. Welcome to Preacher's Projects. Today I'm going to make a giant crosscut sled with all kinds of grooves for hold downs, stop blocks, and attachments. Let's do it. I started out this build with a 2x4 scrap piece of MDF I had left over from another project. Sort of drawing the layout lines for the match fit dovetail groups and the spacing on the long sides is 6 inches and the short side is the standard 4 that Microjig uses for all of their plans. Fences are going to be made from two pieces of 3 quarter inch pure bond plywood that are laminated together. I'm ripping the pieces down slightly oversized so that I can trim them down later. After they're all glued up and I trim them down it just leaves a nicer edge to work with. After getting the fence pieces down to their rough size, it was time to laminate the two pieces together. So I'm just laying on a bead of glue, painting it on as nicely as I can, trying to cover every surface and then putting them together. But here's what I learned during this glue up, that I need more clamps. I think every word worker has said that at least at one point in their life. Also I wish I would have seen Jonathan Katz Moses' new crosscut video so that I would have used a level during this step. Now he learned that actually from Tamar at 3x3 Custom. After the glue dried, I cleaned up one edge on the table saw and then I ripped them down to their final size. Once the fence pieces are done, they're about three inches tall and then with the two pieces of three quarter inch plywood, they're about one and a half inches thick. Just small enough to fit your hand around, but also not too small to where they're still nice and sturdy. I find it's a good size for sleds. And just a reminder, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get updated anytime I post a new build video or any other videos on this channel. Thank you, appreciate it. And once the fences were ready, I could move on to routing the actual dovetail grooves in the base and then on the two fences. I'm modeling this sled after Microjig's ultimate sled, but I wanted one a little bit bigger for some panels that I knew I needed to cut in the future. I also wanted to have a ton of options for different hold downs and attachments and things that we could make together in the future. Taking another hint from Jonathan Katz Moses, and I'm not even going to try to hide my mistakes on this build. I had a lot of problems with the grooves. My fence wasn't clamped down tight enough for the size material I was using. My lack of featherboard created big holes and deviations in the height of the grooves. But the biggest problems with the grooves were the wrong depth. Yep, every single one. I think the problem was that I was using the standard dovetail bit rather than Microjig's special bit, and it just created a bunch of problems for me going down in the road. So I'm going to have to remake this whole build, but at least we'll see the finished product at the end. This was definitely a learning process for me, and every single cut, every single groove that I made here got a little bit better each time. I found out something that I was doing wrong the previous time and found out a way to remedy it in the future. I was still having the wheels move all around in my uneven garage floor, but I wound up finding a good way to move forward even though I had a not ideal situation for what I was going with. Finally, when it came time to cut the fences, I kind of had a process going and I knew everything was working out by this point in the build. And just as a reminder, as always, it's always cool to be the safety guy, to be the one who keeps his fingers and gets to use them for future woodworking projects. If you've got an idea for a project or an attachment that we need to make for this crosscut sled, be sure to leave it in the comments below. For a bit of creature comfort, I used an eighth inch roundover on all sides of the fence except for the reference edge. A little bit of hand sanding off camera and all of the fences feel great and work great. In order to have a place for dust to go and not interfere with any of the stop blocks that we're going to make in the future, I cut a chamfer on the inside bottom edge of the front and the back fences. I've used wooden runners in the past, but with all the changes in humidity that I experience in the Midwest, it leaves the sled either too sloppy to use or too tight to be practical. So I opted for plastic runners. Now these come from a cheap Harbor Freight cutting board set that I got for less than $8. And I'll have plenty for many more sleds and jigs in the future. I used some pennies for raising up the runners, laid a bit of super glue, and then carefully laid the base on top. Some of you think this is the only use for a Chicago electric and wind power tool. Use some pocket screws from above to pull the runners tight to the sled base. Other screws would ruin the alignment, so I settled on brad nailing the runners from below. Time will tell if this works out or not. Then I cut the excess off the side of the runners to have them flush with the edge of the sled base. We'll test, and things were moving the way I wanted them to. 
Need a little help after a long day in the shop cleaning up all the sawdust I had left. And I raised the blade and cut almost all the way to each fence. Man, that MDF is messy. Just a couple of squares and got the back fence as close to square as I could. I'll do William Ming's five cut method off camera to get the cross cut sled ready. So by using match fit hardware, the front fence needs some grooves to allow those pieces of hardware to slide into the sled. So I set up the blade and marked out those spots on the fence, and so now I'm cutting some grooves and dados into the fence. Sprayed by a ton of dust in this process, so I made a temporary dust block while I designed some more permanent options. Temporary dust block in place, I could finally cut those grooves in the back fence. And I'm just moving forward on all my pencil lines and getting them cut through, testing them to fit, make sure it works. Then I secured the front fence by pre-drilling and then screwing in the fence with some screws that I had. Now this fence's alignment isn't as crucial as the other one, but getting it close will help you down the road. We're just going to go ahead and ignore everything that this guy is saying right here. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this crosscut sled, ways we can make it better, or things we can make for it. Thank you so much for watching Preacher's Projects. Bye-bye.